Hi, my name is Erica Kochi, and I co-lead UNICEF's Innovation Group. UNICEF is a 15,000-person organization, and we work in 135 countries around the world. So when we talk about big, we don't just mean, you know, in one country. We mean across many, many, many countries. What I'm going to be talking about today is about how to make small things big. In the world of mobile health, we see so many great ideas, so many great new technologies, but most of them s stay at a very, very small scale, and they don't actually make it big. So what do I mean by big? For example, in Nigeria, every single baby that is born, their birth is reported on using a text message, using a simple, simple text message. This allows them to better access health services, education services, and have an identity as they grow. In Malawi, community health workers, frontline healthcare workers, are monitoring children's nutritional status by sending an SMS as well. And in Zambia and Malawi, what used to take 66 days to deliver a early infant diagnosis results of HIV AIDS back to rural areas now takes 16 days. This is through the use of a text message as well. And in Rwanda, we're ensuring that women get access to emergency obstetric care and regular antenatal care just using simple mobile phones. In Uganda, we're actually working directly with young people themselves to hear about how their health is, how their lives are. You report is a system that we've set up where almost 200,000 people are polled every week with questions such as, are there drugs at the clinic? Or, how is your access to HIV treatment? Have you had counseling services? Or is your water point working? These responses are fed back on a weekly basis and not only just put up on a map, but also given directly to all parliamentarians in the country to act upon. So this is some of the work that we've done over the past five years in mobile health. And we've learned some pretty hard lessons along the way. We failed a lot, and but there are a lot of things that we have learned which have really led to this impact at scale. So the first thing we learned is that you really need to build for your end user, and that means working directly with your end user. The solution that you build needs to be obviously simple, but it also needs to be a cheap. It needs to be affordable and useful for the end user. Everything we've ever built in New York has failed. So when we do build things, we go directly to the field and we work directly with the end users. The second thing we've learned really is that technology is just 5% of the solution. The reason that you report in Uganda is an incredible revolution uh, in mobile health is not because you have all of these text messages appearing on a Google map. It's because this information is linked directly to action from the government. Governments use this to, to make strategies, to implement policies, and to change policies in real time. That's what's impactful. The third thing we've learned is that giving away stuff isn't useful. For example, I have two phones. I have a work phone and I have a personal phone. And this morning I had to make the hard decision about which phone I was going to charge. I chose my personal phone. I think that's a very natural human response. We've seen that when you do give phones to community health workers, if it's not their own phone, they don't usually keep it charged and it doesn't stay with them. A really important lesson that we learned was designing for scale. It seems simple, but it's actually not. People often fall in the trap of designing the perfect pilot, where you can control every aspect of and have a perfect outcome. Reality is that unless you're designing for the messiness of scale from the outset, the chances are that the solution you're building for won't make it to scale. 
One of the most important things that UNICEF does when working and implementing mHealth solutions is creating sustainable systems in the field. This means finding, hiring, training, and ensuring that there is long-term commitment to local software developers, to local designers, and to local project managers. These are the people who are going to stay on and continue to run and scale your M Health initiative. Flying in developers or designers or project managers from San Francisco, New York, Berlin, or London is not sustainable. They'll leave after two weeks, a month, even six months, and the project will fall apart. One of the things that's really led to the rapid expansion and scale of UNICEF's M Health solutions across five countries and nation nationwide scale, and now moving into many, many other countries, is that we build open. What started in Malawi as a small pilot is now nationwide in five countries in different forms. In Nigeria, they're using it for birth registration. In Rwanda, they're using it to track pregnant women through entering antenatal care. And in Malawi, it started in with nutrition. This is because everything we built is, is open source. And if you really want to see that kind of scale, and you really want to see that adaptability and recustomization in ways you couldn't even imagine, openness is key. The final point really is about the other aspect of the end user, not the end user in the field who's using the solution, but the end user who's getting this information and aggregating it and making decisions upon it, and at most importantly, allocating budget towards it. They're not going to care if it's 22.3 percent malnourished children in Malawi or 22.5 percent. What they want to know is a general trend, and really appreciating it and customizing it so it's useful for them to make, for people to make decisions on is, has really been key. Those are the seven principles. Uh, if you want to find out more, uh, please email me, ecochi at unicef.org, or go to the website, www.unicefstories.org. Thank you very much.